Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar and Google settled a five billion dollar lawsuit for how much? Nobody knows ladies and gentlemen, those details aren't out there. But Google was caught basically uh, kind of being a little shady about incognito mode. Now you might be wondering, whoa Muda, what, what are you talking about that title? Incognito mode isn't really incognito? You know, I never really thought I'd have to make a video discussing how incognito mode in a browser doesn't actually protect your information or keep you incognito on the internet. But it seems like there's been a lot of mass confusion, which has basically caused Google to settle a lawsuit regarding the mass confusion, okay? So I guess let's get down to the facts of the matter here, okay? So according to some of these articles here, Google settled a class action lawsuit on Thursday, this Thursday, brought by users who allege the search giant captured and tracked their data while in incognito mode. So incognito mode, for those of you who have no idea, is a browser mode in Chrome, and I'm sure a lot of you probably know about it because you might be watching some unsavory videos on the internet. When as soon as you open the incognito tab by clicking this top three like uh, buttons going to new incognito, You'll notice it says, now you can browse privately and other people who use this device won't see your activity. However, downloads, bookmarks, reading list items will be saved. Chrome won't save the following information. Your browser history, cookies and site data, information entered in forms. Your activity might still be visible to websites you visit, your employer or school, or your internet service provider. So to give you an idea, these three points I want to talk specifically about. When you go to a website like www.fartsniffers.com, fartsniffers.com is probably going to have a bunch of cookies, trackers. It's going to have a log of who's connected, what browsers, user agents. It's going to have a profile of you, specifically the trackers. But websites know who's going where. By hitting incognito mode, it's not as if you mask your IP address or you, uh, you know, hide the key, uh, you know, uh, identifiers that are on the outside facing part of your network. You don't do any of that. Though your employer or school is important. Whenever you're browsing the internet at work or in a school, it's always governed underneath an IT professional or somebody that is monitoring your system specifically. Now, it's not as if there's a creepy, like scary eye of Sauron watching you, but generally speaking, if you watch adult material, for instance, at your job, okay? You connect to a shady website at your job, and something bad happens, an IT professional will take literally minutes to figure out who went where, what computer it belonged to, and what account was signed into it. So that's kind of how schools, employers work. Your internet service provider. Yeah, when you buy internet from somebody like, you know, uh, Bell, Rogers, Verizon, uh, I don't know, what, what what's in the United States, uh, AT&T, all these internet service providers, they know exactly what you're doing, okay? That's not really a shocking concept. Your information is routed from your computer to their servers and then to other servers on the internet. So that's not a shocking concept. For me, I never really thought that most people wouldn't understand this, but I guess here we are. All right, so let's look at the actual court documentation for this. Now, the court document back in the day was from the plaintiffs versus Google as the defendant. So here, the plaintiffs here bring a class action based on Google's surreptitious in interception and collection of personal and sensitive user data while the users are in private browsing mode, they say. So it contains seven counts of the violation of the Federal Wiretap Act, the California Invasion of Privacy Act, uh, violation of Comprehensive Data Access and Fraud Act, invasion of privacy, intrusion upon seclusion, breach of contract. Man, these are some laws that I have never heard of. Goddamn, being a lawyer is both an exciting endeavor, but also a mind-numbing endeavor, I would say, too. Jesus Christ. So the background of this case is the parties have hotly disputed this action from the start. For the sake of brevity, the court only gives the background relevant to the resolution of Google's motion for summary judgment. So when we talk about things like data collection, plaintiffs are Google's account holders who use two types of private browsing modes, incognito mode, which is found in the Chrome browser, like I just showed you a minute ago, and the private browsing mode of other browsers. So again, this could be things like Firefox, Brave, really anything else, okay? So private browsing and incognito. Remember, Google calls it incognito, Firefox calls it private, other browsers call it usually private browsing. Generally, I think 
all of this is deception. I think these modes should be called local cash only, okay? Or guest mode, I think is probably the smart option to talk about. So to give you an idea what Incognito does, is it basically creates a sandbox environment for your browser. So you open up your web browser, you're, you're on the internet, when as soon as you open up Incognito mode, it creates a special sandbox kind of like a virtual machine, kind of like a, you know, partitioned area that is supposed to be deleted upon you exiting the browser. What this does is it stores all of the information for that session in that sandbox alone. So for a local system, right, it is completely incognito. It means that a guest can browse on your system and none of their information gets stored or saved or whatever. What they do on other websites when they connect to other pages that will still be reflected as if you were browsing the internet yourself. So what I mean is, when we look at the amount of trackers on the internet, Google is the largest tracker by far. So here I've got two browsers, right? On the right here is a completely clean uh, Chrome browser, okay? This is a Chrome browser and we're on a website known as coveryourtracks.eff. So this is gonna show you what a browser fingerprint looks like. Now on the left, you have an incognito version of the same browser. So this browser is in private incognito mode, and this is in standard, you know, my local default mode. So this drives, so, so they know my time zone offsets, they know my time zone, which is America Toronto, they know my resolution exactly. They also know down to which fonts that I'm using on my system. What they also know is the Linux system that I'm using, so they know which browser that, or sorry, which operating system that I am using. They know my touch support, they know things like my ad blockers, they know all of the shit inside the system, okay? They know my exact hardware concurrency, which is the amount of CPUs that I have. Basically, the identifying information for my browser is still the same, no matter if I'm incognito or not. Which means for a tracker, like Google, for instance, they could still look at the incognito version and determine that it is you. That's really the crux of this argument. People, I guess, thought that their information was private and nobody was going to track them, when in reality, incognito never meant nobody could track you. So there were some key points that I actually highlighted here that pretty much stuck out to me when it came to Google getting called out on their incognito mode and the branding around it. So here it says, relying on Calhoun, Google argues that its privacy policy unambiguously discloses the data collection challenged here because it is mode agnostic. That is, Google collects the same data whether users are in regular or private browsing mode. Said differently, Google argues summary judgment is appropriate because it disclosed that it collects user data in general, even if it did not disclose that it collects users' private browsing data in particular. Plaintiffs, by contrast, claim that because Google portrayed incognito mode, for example, as affording more privacy than regular browsing mode, a reasonable user could have concluded that Google's data collection was not mode agnostic. So like I just told you a while ago, even if you're in incognito mode, a lot of the information that is used to profile you to fingerprint you is the same. So when you connect to a Google tracker or anything of that nature, Google can still send you relevant information because they know with a reasonable, you know, understanding that even if that browser from that computer, even if it's an incognito session or not, the fact that for the Google tracker picking it up, they don't even care if it is. They just know that all of the similarities, like this person is using the same CPU, the same operating system, their monitor is the same resolution, they're from the same time offset, they're from so on and so forth. Their IP address is the same. They're going to reasonably assume that it is the same person, even if they clicked on the incognito flag or not. All incognito did was prevent your local system from storing that specific session. So realistically, when people say incognito is for porn, that's quite literally what it's there for. It's there to not store your active session, okay? So somebody can't just log into your system, click on the history tab and see what kind of stuff you've been watching, right? That's literally the only actual case use for it. Other than that, testing, that's about it. So looking beyond some of their other things too, one of the other points that I read was Google's other cited authorities do not compel a different result. Rather, those cases confirm that the standing analysis is contextual. For example, Facebook tracking. 
finding standing not just because Facebook correlated data collected with user profiles, but also because Google, or sorry, Facebook had promised not to collect users' data after they logged out, but did so anyways. Finding a lack of standing where data at issue was not as sensitive as shown here, such as basic contact information, including one's email address, phone number, or Facebook or Zynga username is private information. What is more, plaintiffs set forth evidence that Google does not store their data with unique identifiers. For example, plaintiffs have evidence that Google stores users regular and private browsing data in the same logs. It uses those mixed logs to send personalized ads, and even if the individual data point gathered are anonymous by themselves, when aggregated, Google can use them to identify a unique user with a high probability of success. Again, your browser fingerprint pretty much is your actual ID on the internet. One of the other highlights was, for example, right here, where Google's privacy policy is meant to help you understand what information we collect and why. We build a range of services that help millions of people daily to explore and interact with the world in new ways. Our services include Google Apps, sites, devices, like Search, YouTube, and Google Home, platforms like Google Chrome browser and Android operating systems, products that are integrated into third-party apps. So again, notably, incognito mode is not mentioned in this list of services. Rather, Google shifts and in the next paragraph advises users, you can use our services in a variety of ways to manage your privacy. You can also choose to browse the web in a private mode, like Chrome incognito mode. And across our services, you can adjust your privacy settings to control what we collect and how your information is used. That is the only mention of the privacy mode. The privacy policy is silent as to any data collection specific to private browsing mode. So look, at the end of the day, this whole argument comes down to how this was advertised. And I am not going to sit down and simp for big corporations here. I'm just gonna straight up tell you how it is. The confusion is beneficial to not just Google, but Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, every single one of these big tech companies basically relies on confusion, especially around this topic. Look, data collection and privacy is, well, data collection specifically is the bread and butter of Facebook, uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, a lot of these big companies. And obviously, would they love to track you? Without a shadow of a doubt. Is for them to implement privacy features is literally cannibalizing their own business. And in this situation, obviously the courts were not really charitable to Google here, which is why a settlement effectively occurred. And you know, for Google, this is all that could really pretty much be expected, okay? This is not something that truly shocks me. To give you an accurate comparison, I feel, is something like Tesla full self-driving or autopiloting. You know, I really don't understand the term behind it. I don't understand why they call it full self-driving when you constantly have to be nagged at the wheel to, you know, turn it every so bit, uh, you know, be there, uh, you know, be present. If it's truly fully self-driving, it should require no human input. And if it's calling itself autopilot, that phrasing, that term is going to lead a lot of random individuals, the general public, into thinking, you know, maybe it's designed to be completely autonomous when it really isn't. And you know, there are states like California, which have absolutely, from what I understand, prohibited the use of that term because it is so damning when somebody hears it. And the same could be applied for private or incognito mode. Look, incognito mode was never truly incognito. So now that I've explained this to you, that your browser fingerprint, which is carried with you no matter what do not track incognito mode that you actually use. Look, at the end of the day, there's only a few browsers in the world that I really know of that do their best to confuse your browser fingerprint, okay? One of them is the Tor browser, which I use for you know deep web browsing. That is probably the most safest browser that you can use for your privacy and anonymity. You've also got LibreWolf, which is pretty good from my understanding. You've also got Brave Browser, which is what I personally use. Um, but again, no sponsorship. This is what I actually use myself on a daily basis. Um, whether it's the most private or not, I'm not at liberty to say. I haven't done any extensive testing. And more importantly, your privacy is probably best protected by a VPN service if you're worried about sites tracking you by your IP address or some public facing identifier. And it's not just any VPN that you should use. Molvad VPN might be the best option for you to use. Molvad VPN is a complete 
privacy-focused VPN service. No sponsorship here, but Moldat VPN might be the best option for people because these people have been raided in the past and they have truly no logs on you. And if you're worried about your privacy and your anonymity, this might be the best VPN service for you, period. But again, that's what it comes down to. Google's incognito wasn't very incognito. And for most people who know what an incognito mode does, um, which, you know, is a small subset of people like me and people who are interested in this topic, you knew from the beginning that private modes, whether you were using Google, Firefox, Brave, whatever, wasn't truly going to keep you private and safe on the internet. And I feel like these sites and these services should all label this stuff as guest mode or something simple because it's not meant to protect your privacy, it's just meant for you to have a sandbox session. If you're truly worried about what other sites are doing to you, then you have got a long ways to go before just opening up private mode. That's pretty much all it comes down to. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, Google takes an L, quite literally. Uh, I am out.